Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have some fun stuff for you. I'm going to be painting a landscape in watercolors and I'm going to be using some new to you watercolors. These are the Turner Artist watercolors. They're extremely affordable, good quality paints. Um, and this video is brought to you by Jerry's Artorama. All the products I'm using today can be found at Jerry's. And these paints are really cool. I've had several people ask me about these because they are such a good buy. This set of 18 is very affordably priced right now. I can't quote you exactly because it's been a while since I looked, but very, very cheap. Something like 70% off list. Um, so I'm going to be using these and I swatched them out here so you can see how they look and which is a great tip anytime you start some new paints and then I've put them in a um, small plastic palette and here's a tip for you what I did was I took a piece of masking tape and a permanent marker and I wrote down what every color was so that I could easily refill my palette and also tell you exactly what color I have but it's also a really great tip for beginners because sometimes you don't remember what you squirted out um, and you're going to look for a certain color and you're not sure where what it is so that's a good tip for you I'm also going to be using the Mimic brushes and I really like these because they are animal friendly. They do not contain any um, animal fur. I'm going to be using the Mimic Kalinske ones right here. So they are designed to replicate a Kalinske sable brush but they're completely synthetic. So they're vegetarian, vegan safe, um, and animal lover safe. And they have um, them in sets or individually. So if you want to try a couple brushes without making a, a huge commitment, you can totally do that. I'm painting on Arches paper today which is one of my favorite brands. Actually, it's probably my favorite brand. It's a little on the pricey side, but um, but I do love it. So when you first get a brush like this, you're going to want to rinse it out, remove any sizing. That's pretty much a standard thing with any brush. Now what I am going to do is just put on a couple lines on my paper because I'm doing a landscape and I'll put a link to the reference photo um, from Paint My Photo. I'm just going to use this um, watercolor pencil, just a gray one. You could use whatever, nothing too dark though. Um, I'm going to have a kind of a mass of trees here. And I've got a back of a pond there, and I've got a mountain up here, and um, I just got some rocks over here, but I'm really not even going to worry about that. I just basically wanted to get um, my paper blocked out. That's You don't even have to do that if you don't want to. I'm going to start with a number 20 flat, which is about three quarters of an inch wide of the Mimic Kalinske which when I hate to say Kalinsky because it's not a Kalinsky brush. It's, it's a completely safe brush. So I'm wetting the sky area. Okay, and I want to make sure it's fairly shiny. So I like to tip my paper. Arches paper is 100% cotton. It's a little more absorbent than a lot of the other ones. So I just wanted to, uh, wanted to mention that. In case you're working on like a Strathmore, you won't need as much water as you do on an Arches. And I'm going to go in with some ultramarine blue. And so here I'm working on a sl the Slantwell palette here. Um, it's a Zoltan Zabo one. He's a watercolorist and design this palette. So I have these bigger wells for mixing, but I'm just going in with just a straight ultramarine. So I'm just going to add that to the sky. So I'm working straight from the tube. The paints haven't dried in the palette yet. So um, I just have to be careful. I don't grab too much. That's why I want to add plenty of water and drag it up and make sure I don't have any lumps. Oh my, I just got some purple in there. I do not want that. So if that ever happens to you, simply while it's still wet, gently paint over it. And just kind of pretty though. And then, I don't know how that happened. I think I got part of my brush in the other well, so I'm going to have to be careful about that. So what you do is you just brush over it and dab it. Purple is a very staining color, so i got to make sure I get to that really uh, really quickly. We're starting off gangbusters here. Clean that out of my palette. I must have just got the edge of my paint there. There we go. Okay, so now we're back to adding in our sky color. Okay. Now I'm going to take that same color and let's see, I think I want to have, um, I'm going to have some kind of cooler mountains here. I'm going to want some green. So I'm going to do some sap green. You can see my mixing area there. So I got the sap green and the ultramarine. And I'm going to start just kind of dabbing it in. The paper is dry right now where I'm putting the paint in. Do some yellow ochre in there. I like to start with a uh, a big brush because um, then I can't fuss around. I don't want to have, to have fussy details at this point. I'm going to make a little bit of gray with my, um, I think I'm going to use burnt sienna 
and ultramarine as usual. That's one of my go-to mixes. It makes a beautiful gray. This kit also came with black and white. Um, I usually don't put those on my palette because if I'm if I'm going to use co those colors, and I'm typically going to um, I'm kind of using them as corrections. Now, what I'm doing here is painting it right up to the edge, and I'm letting it blend and blur where the wet paper is because I want that to kind of look far away. So it's cool. The color's cool, so it's going to um, recede. Warmer colors advance, cooler colors recede. So this is just going to give us the impression of these treetops. You know, that blurriness is going to look like little treetops in the distance. And look at that. We didn't have to really do a darn thing, and it just looks fantastic. If you want to blot out some puffy clouds, you could. I think I like I like the way it looks here without blotting, but you know, if yours is too uniform and you want to do that, by all means, it's your painting. You go right to town and you have fun with that. All right, and now I'm just kind of dragging my uh, my paint around with the edge of the brush. I want to make sure I do keep some, um, you know, some definition. I don't want everything to get kind of blurred. I want some brown in there too, just on its own. Um, but I also don't want anything too, you know, too standy outy. I want it to be pretty uh, soft and receding back there. And I think I'll do a little bit of gray, light, light, light gray at the shoreline. That's again my uh, ultramarine and burnt sienna. All right, I'm actually, I have my brushes standing in a Rockwell brush holder easel, which is kind of nice because they all sit right out and I can see exactly what I have and it's double sided so I can hold all of the new Mimic brushes that I have for watercolor there and protect them. Hope I'm keeping that fairly straight. Sometimes I'll tip up my paper because I, I paint with it flat. Sometimes I got to tip it up and make sure that I have a fairly straight uh, horizon line back there. So I apologize if that looks a little wonky to you. I probably should, I could have used a ruler actually to put that in. <laughs> that would probably would have been smart, a smart way to block that off. All right, I want a little more yellow. Got some leaves, to, probably a lot of oak trees out there if we got all that yellow. The lovely oak trees that don't like to drop their leaves until the snow flies. It's always fun to deal with that in the spring. <laughs> and we're supposed to have another whopper of a winter in New England. Not sure how I feel about that. Okay, who am I kidding? I know how I feel about that. It's not positive. <laughs> I'm glad I work from home though because I don't have to drive in it. We just got a uh, a truck a couple months ago, so that'll be nice for my husband to take to work. You don't have to drive the little car. And a little more green in there, I guess. And because burnt sienna and ultramarine are sedimentary, they lift well, and if you want to go in and soften up anything, you can at this point. And I feel like I maybe want a little more darker areas, so I'm doing a little of the ultramarine and sap again, and just kind of kind of tapping some in there. All right. Now I'm going to move over to this area, and this is um, more um, foreground trees, and I think I'm going to switch to a round brush. This is a number 12 round, nice big juicy brush, but it also comes to a really nice point, which is, it's a characteristic of a Kalinsky, and um, this they have really um, hit the mark with, with this. I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow ochre, and I'm going to add it right up over here. I also want to have a little bit of a brighter yellow, but I like to add the colors I've already been using in first. I'm going to grab some, um, and I'm going to look on the side of my bra on my thing because I want to make sure permanent yellow is what they call it. It's almost like a cad yellow medium. So you could use either. You could use what you have, guys. This is uh, if you're looking for, you know, for a new watercolor to try. That's why I try these new paints, but as always, use what you have. I'm just putting in some of these colors, just kind of reserve some lighter areas that I want to make sure I don't paint over. Like, you know, you know I, don't, I don't use masking fluid very often. I'm definitely one of those 
painters just likes to you know get down to business here now I'm going to take a little of that yellow that permanent yellow I'm going to add some sap green to it to get a really vibrant color probably you should rinse your brush especially if you're going from wet paint like this you should rinse your brush in between colors do as I say not as I do right <laughs> all right I'm going to add a little bit of that into here because we're near the water here so things would be a little bit lusher a little bit more green to them you can do a little bit up here Not that nice contrast right so when we have the red trees next to those nice acidy green colors we're going to have some nice contrast some nice vivid vivid colors I also want to get some darks in here so what I'm going to do is actually with that dirty brush I'm going to grab some of that um, blue with a little bit of burnt sienna mix that I have and I'm going to add some of that right to the bottom I will let it just kind of drip up it'll give me that nice that I didn't wash my brush because I wanted that earthy look I like how the paint likes to react with each other on the paper and I'm you know again I'm at taking colors I've already used I think that's the most important thing is to keep dipping back into those same colors so you have harmony throughout your painting and these uh, areas here are going to be our shadows So value is super important. I'm going to be doing a tutorial, uh, a drawing tutorial, just shades of uh, charcoal, and it's just so important to learn your values. And you can do that by taking a photo and, ex and uh, converting it to black and white on your computer. That will really help you, I think, with that. All right, I want to have one nice big dark tree here, maybe even a couple. So I'm going to grab some more of that ultramarine blue, some of the burnt sienna. and maybe just a smidgen of that sap green and I'm gonna start with my brush look at I'm still using that fat brush but since it comes to a fine point I could totally do that let's see you know what I really need to let my sky dry before I do that so let me uh, let me just kind of wipe off my brush here save that paint I think I'm gonna go in and fill in some more colors I really need that to be to be uh, to be dry before I do that or I'm gonna have a mess but I can do some of these red trees in here. Now, the thing I noticed about the Turner colors, there were three colors with the word Maya in front of them, and they behave like Japanese colors. They're not very, um, they're not very flowy. They, they're kind of like the um, Kiritake, Ganzi, Tambe colors that have been very popular with crafters. Um, they don't flow as much. They're almost kind of creamy feeling, almost like a tempera or a finger paint. So those I'm actually going to, going to not use. So I'm going to go with a permanent scarlet for this but I just wanted to let you know that's why it's so important when you're trying paint for the first time to um, to swatch it out and see it's not even just the color that it is that you need to know you need to know how it's going to behave with the other you know compared to and with the other paints you have like for instance you might not want to go whole hog and get one of these sets although I think the 18 set is probably the, the best option because it is very affordable versus getting it by the tube but you know you can always just buy a couple tubes and try it out but if you were to buy the Maya tubes I think you wouldn't have a representation of the set so I do want to tell you I do want to tell you that they have a definitely a different characteristic about them definitely more like a Japanese paint and I think um, the Turner paints I know the Turner aqua gouache which I love also has that kind of like um, Japanese feel to it and uh it's definitely it's definitely fun it's something different it's a different palette of colors that I'm used to but I think that's kind of fun once in a while to kind of shake it up a little bit all right I'm gonna make some orange I'm gonna take that same color permanent scarlet I believe is what I have and some of that um, permanent yellow it's gonna look very similar to what I've just put down there probably need to add a little more yellow to it I love the fall colors. It's so nice when you get out in a canoe or something in the fall. Oh, so pretty. Everything looks so gorgeous. Do a little heavier on the yellow here. I like to just dip, dip into some blue, but that's all right. And I'm not worried that I don't really have a lot of definition here yet because we're going to go in after and paint in some more. Um, to paint some of those big pine trees in and put some branches in and stuff so I'm not I just want I want to keep my my brighter areas it's always easy to go in and add darks over watercolors 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do, um, I think maybe add a little bit of, of uh, green to some of these areas, but then I'm just going to let that dry because we'll go over it and add definition. Now for the this rest of this area, I've got some rocks, I've got some stream, I've got some reflections, but I'm going to treat it as one thing right now. So I'm going to begin by using my round brush and just wetting it. I could actually use, do the flat brush or the round brush for this. It doesn't really matter. Flat brush might hold a little bit more. Actually, why don't we bust into this? Let's give this a try. Let's try the, uh, let's try this nice big two inch. Oh, that's soft. It feels like a makeup brush. This is probably more to replicate a squirrel, whereas that one is more like a, a Kalinsky sable brush. Oh, now that holds some water there. Oh, that's nice. I, I like how it's not shedding. I didn't, you know, sometimes I'm like, well, maybe I should try that and, you know, wash it good, make sure it's not going to shed, but I haven't had any. <laughs> this is rare. Usually on those two inch brushes, the first time you use them, you get hair all over the place. I don't see a single hair on my paper. Oh, that's nice. That was a little risk I took there. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And now I am going to use some colors that I've already used. I'm going to take some yellow ochre and a little ultramarine and going to add a little bit of that into the rockier areas. I need a little bit more. What is that? I got some yellow ochre in that turquoise. A little, uh, oh, burnt sienna too. Let's put a little burnt sienna over there. Put a little yellow ochre in there. So I can, I can get all that all nice and muddy and don't have to worry about it. Okay, so we got some nice dirty watercolors. Not that the water's dirty, we just got to get those reflections in there. Add some shadows. Get that nice rocky color. And since I have wet paper, it's going to blend pretty well. I'm going to do a nice, make a nice gray with the burnt sienna and ultramarine. We're going to just kind of wash that a little more ultramarine and a little more water. That's a little dark. You can always blot it if we need to. Get a lot of those little rocks. which we will define later. Now I want to get some actual sky color in the water because water is heavily influenced by the color of the sky because it's like a mirror. So I'm going to add some of that. It's a little too dark. I should have known better on that one. I knew I had too much paint, but I did it anyway. There we go. Add some of that wherever I think the sky would reflect a little bit more. In fact, I'm going to go back to that uh, bigger brush. I need to cover a little more real estate here. Now the Arches paper, it is more absorbent, but it also stays wetter longer. It doesn't have as much um, as much sizing in it, I think, as um, as like the paper. You know, the the wood pulp paper. So it doesn't, you don't get as many blooms from it. Need to be a little darker in there. Now value, that's another thing. If I look at the photo reference, I can tell that this water needs to be darker. I, I look at it and I squint and I can say, yep, this definitely needs to be darker. So I'm adding in more, um, more color now. I want to get some reflection colors. So I'm going to go in with some of those uh, yellows and reds. It is very forgiving, I think, this type of paper because it can handle the um, it can handle the <laughs> abuse, I guess. But like, I mean, like I'm pretty aggressively painting over and over, and a lot of papers would have too much sizing and they would kind of lift up on you. So you kind of have to paint it once and leave it be. So you know, if you are looking to upgrade, it's a great paper. But you know, the other the thing is though, don't. If you're really super concerned with budget, you may be nervous painting on a paper like this. 
you know, that is a little bit more expensive. So that's, that's my only caution. If you think that you wouldn't use it because, or you'd be afraid to use it because of its price, then, then you might want to stare away. I will say, um, Jerry's usually has it for about 50% off list. So at least you can, you know, this isn't a block, meaning that it's, it's secured down on all sides. So that makes it, um, easy to use. All I have to do is like lift the lid and, and start painting, which is nice. I'm adding a little shadow here while the paper's still wet. Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue is just going to help bridge a little, make a little divide. Now, even though this is stretched, you st I still have a little bit of a, uh, of a buckle in, in it, but it will dry flat. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. Now, while this is all wet still, I'm going to use my paper towel to lift out some rocks. Try not to be too fussy because the, the rocks are natural. They're from nature. They're not placed. You don't want to look like an interior designer came in here and was like, well, let's put a rock over here. And then we'll put a rock over there. That would be smashing. No, we don't want to do that. We want to have our natural rocks where they might and they will be influenced by the local color around so we're not even going to worry if we don't have every rock lifted up we're just kind of generally lifting up rocks now we're going to let this dry and we can come back and add our details and finish it up okay my paper is dried and i wanted to show you some of the cool effects here look here at the tree line you can see this kind of like little feathery business here where we had the uh, dryer paint up next to the wetter sky and we have this really awesome um, kind of granulation there which is fun and you kind of see that around here with the green going into the yellows. I just love seeing what different watercolor paints do when they dry. I think it's kind of fun. All right so now we're going to go in and we're going to put a oops I left my water upstairs hold on a minute. <laughs> I had changed my water and forgot to uh, <laughs> forgot to bring it back downstairs to the studio. Okay, so we're going to put in a few tall trees over here to add a little scale. And I am going to use some of the colors I've been using. I'm going to use my ultramarine blue. I've switched to a number eight round of the Mimic Kalinske line. I'm going to add some sap green to that. And I think a smidgen of the burnt sienna. Get a nice dark there. Maybe just a little bit more blue to that. All right. And now again, I'm using my brush straight up and down. I hope my hand's not going to be in the way. And I'm going to start by kind of pulling down a tree trunk. Okay. And I've got a wiggle in my hand because I don't want to have a super straight line. And then I'm kind of trying to paint around a yellow tree and red trees here. I'm just trying to get that kind of tucked in back there a little bit. Try to keep it fairly random. You want to, um, you want to make it look like it just kind of happened. You know, you don't want it to look too fussy. Pine trees just happening in the wild. There we go. Another little guy right here. How about that? I know why Bob Ross is so metal, mellow. It's it's very relaxing painting these happy little trees here. Need to mix up a little more color. I do find I use a lot more paint when I'm working from the uh, wet from the tubes like I am today. A little more of that blue in there. I only put it a little bit because I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't sure how quickly I'd go through it. So I'll probably top it off and then let it uh, dry up a little bit. A little more blue in there. Just kind of drip it in. These, these uh, are wooden handles so you want to make sure that you don't leave them um, in the water. <laughs> I have a bad habit on that. I think it's it's because I have children and I get distracted a lot when I'm painting and so I'll, you know, kind of be rushing around and be like, oh, the kids are about to get off the bus and I go run upstairs and I completely forgot that I had left paint in my, uh, left my brushes in water. 
That's why I usually use the acrylic handles. I do like these brushes though, so I'm gonna have to be very cognizant of that. All right, I think I'm just gonna do a couple more little treetops peeking out from behind some of these deciduous, deciduous, probably maple trees if they're this color. And maybe just another little guy right out there. There, I think that's fun. Okay, I'm also gonna put a few maybe like shorter little fir trees over here, just kind of maybe little shrubs that haven't really got going too much yet. We'll get those in there. And basically what this is doing is it's giving um, some contrast to our bright trees. You know, like this well, this color here I'm putting in is a little bit more blue, so it's going to make the oranges really pop. These can be trees, these can be shadows, doesn't really matter. Your eyes will, will make them trees. Okay, you really don't need to fuss with it. Our, our brains will say, yep, those are trees. And keep on keeping on. All right, now I wanna do some of the rocks. So I think I'm gonna to switch to a flat brush because um, rocks are generally kind of squared off. So I'm gonna take that kind of, um, I think I'll add a little yellow ochre to that. Yellow ochre, then I have that gray that I made, which was like burnt sienna and um, blue. And I'm just gonna just kind of put in some shapes. Actually, a smaller, a smaller brush might be better for this, but I'm just gonna get some of the bigger shapes. Just you know, very random here. So those would be my bigger rocks. Now I'm gonna switch over to my. Um, 12 round because I don't want to get it too fussy and I want to make a cooler gray so I'm going to go with a little bit more blue and that color I was just using and just kind of add to them maybe put some rounder pebbles by switching your brushes up you are just going to you're going to keep it random naturally Doesn't look like much now, but when we add shadows around them, it's really going to make them pop. Trust me, trust me on that. I think the hardest thing with rocks is kind of letting, just letting go and letting them be kind of do their own thing and be random. I think we kind of naturally want to line things up and make order out of things and you you just have to kind of let let it go when you're painting especially when you're painting a landscape you got to kind of let uh let nature take over i think i want a little more brown in those rocks i'm just using the just slightest amounts of color because i want these to be really light and i'm going to be adding shadows around them okay now while those are drying I am going to uh, work on the this area back here a little bit. I feel like I need a little bit of shadow in this area. Do a little bit of burnt sienna and that green blue mix that I have there. I'm just going to put it along the shoreline back there to kind of give like a little, maybe a little definition and kind of shadow under the tree line way, way back there. And maybe grab my credit card scraper tool because that's handy for just dragging up little bits of random color. That way I won't end up with anything too distinct. I think I want to add a little blue right to that wet paint. I think I'll switch to a smaller brush so I don't end up with too much water because when you have a synthetic um, Kalinske, it wants to act a lot like a natural Kalinske and hold a lot of water. So you really have to be aware of that, that you may be, if you're used to using a regular like Taclon brush, it, you know, th those will not hold as much water. So you might end up with a lot more water than you bargained for when you're switching over to a, even though it's synthetic, when you switch over to a, a synthetic Kalinske, because it's gonna have the properties of the regular Kalinske. And I'm adding a little bit more darkness uh, of the blue to the water back there. And I'm also gonna add that in and around some of these groups of rocks. 
they're starting to dry so I just want to get a little bit around where it, well it's not you know I don't want it to be super obvious but I do want to get a little bit around because when you have uh, the rocks are going to be putting shadows they're going to be um, riling the water a little bit you know because the wind blows and then the ro rocks block it and so then you'll have interesting refractions of light The paper has a little bit of drag to it, which is kind of cool. It gives me that neat texture. Do you ever do a painting? And you think, boy, I think I painted that before. I'm kind of having a little deja vu with this. It's like, have I painted this painting before? Please tell me if I have. <laughs> Isn't that awful? I'm just like, well, it's like the other day when I lost, I couldn't find my brayers. And I was like, well, maybe I should ask you guys because maybe you've watched a storage video and you remember what I did with those darn things because I couldn't find them anywhere. It was embarrassing. I did eventually find them and they were in a drawer that I swear I already looked at. It was a, uh, it was very strange. Okay. I'm going to soften that up a little bit. That's a little bright. All right, let's see how that feels pretty dry those rocks and I'm gonna get some kind of brown going and I am gonna put a little blue in that just because that is really really dark and really bright and uh, deep colored I'm gonna start painting around some of these rocks now this is kind of a scary thing for many of you because you have to be very decisive and so far we've been painting very loosely so I am just kind of tracing the outline of the where the rock and the water meet. So these are hard edges. I don't want them to blend over the rock, but they can kind of blend back into the water. You now I can kind of drag them out into the water side, but I want them sharp against the rock. And I think when you're dealing with watercolor, a nice rule of thumb is when in doubt, leave it out. Like if you're not sure if you should have this detail here or you're not sure about the detail, you're better off to leave that detail out than you are to fake it sometimes. Your brain, because your brain will say, okay, you have rocks, we know what that is, and they'll, your brain will fill in the rest of the, the, uh, the stuff that you need. And now I'm putting some green here because I've got those green trees and they would be reflected in here into these shadows. So I'm adding some of that to that brown. So you're seeing kind of the murk in the stream because he's because I look at all the rocks you know it's not very deep here uh, and but we're also seeing the reflections of some of those tall trees so I want to make sure I get those represented in there too and I want to get some of my reddish brown because I've got the red from the trees and I've got the brown from the bottom of the water that red is super strong so I've got to tone it down a little bit I'm just going to grab some of that green that will tone it down brown it up a little bit more too and I've already used it so I'm not worried about doing that so I'm keeping in mind where where it is here and I'm trying to match up the reflections with it as I go and I've got more greens over here so I'm going to grab some greens and I'm going to muddy them up a little bit because I don't want anything too bright in the water because we're seeing the reflections but we're also seeing into the green of the water. I know it can be very confusing at this point probably just looks like a lot of messy uh, messiness right now but we'll tie it together don't worry. Pull a little bit of that green back there if we want to. Water's, water reflects so much. And then I'm just going to trace around some of these guys down here. It's kind of outlining the bottoms of the rocks. So the more you get away from land, the more you're going to have more blue from the reflection of the sky. I think I want to add a little more brown to the blue down here because we do have the mud. You know, we want to make sure we have the represent it all. So I like to get some sharp definition and then I like to drag it out. So I'd like kind of 
drag some of those lines out, get the little ripples in the stream. This picture was taken at Jordan Pond, according to the photographer at Paint My Photo. The lovely locations in the great state of Maine. All right, I gotta tip this up for a minute so I can see kind of how we're doing. And I feel like I need a little bit more, maybe yellow ochre down here. I feel like that's getting a little too, uh, too dark. Let's add a little bit of that grime to it. Sometimes we need the mud. We need the mud when we paint sometimes. Add a few more little rocks. <clears throat> now, as I go, I do want to get a little bit more defined because we need contrast. Right now we have very undefined splashes of stuff here. Little yellow ochre. Reflections in the water. And then I think we're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna do a final definition on the rocks. I've switched over to a watercolor pencil because I was feeling like I really needed to get in there and draw the definition on these rocks. And I'm using a French gray watercolor pencil from Derwent. French gray, it's number 70 in the watercolor uh, pencil line. And I just feel like I need to give some substance and some weight to these rocks. And so I'm kind of outlining and shading with them. Feel free to stop and pause the video if you need to or to make it full screen. By adding just a little bit more detail with these with these pencils, I think I can pull a lot more uh, a lot more substance to them. Now I'm going to go in with a smaller brush, and I'm going to use my gray that I made with the burnt sienna and the ultramarine, and I'm going to start to I'm going to add that final kind of shadow around them. I think that a pencil will just give me enough substance so that um, so they kind of stand out a little bit more. So the shadow I'm putting is really on the bottom edge of the rocks where they touch the water to help kind of um, reinforce their weight and give them a little solid anchor point. And I probably won't do it to all of them. I just want to make sure that I get that I that you know you can tell they're rocks. Every rock doesn't have to be defined, but you need to you have something there that says, yep, these are indeed rocks. And when you have light things on top of dark things like you often do in watercolor, it is uh it's difficult to achieve that sometimes. But if you can just kind of reinforce a few then your brain kind of uh, picks up the slack and and uh, and kind of does the rest of the work. So now just by adding that colored pencil, the watercolor pencil, and the uh, the paintbrush there, the small paintbrush with the darker color, it really helps reinforce that. And I want to do a few of them over here. And then go in with a little bit of that dark again. to say, yep, we got rocks, we got rocks. Get your rocks, folks. We got big ones, little ones, gray ones, brown ones. Rocks for sale. <laughs> I'm losing it. I, I didn't want that dark on the top. So maybe I'll draw a couple of their little pebbles in here where I can kind of control them a little bit. It's all about kind of tricking the eye. You make some things in focus, so you tell what they are, then everything else your brain just kind of fixes. <laughs> Thank goodness, right? And you can fuss and play with this as much as you like. I hope you like this real-time tutorial. Maybe it was a little too long. I never know. You know, I don't. 
but you guys seem to like them. It's going into the weekend, so I'm going to give you a little time to, you'll have a little time to paint it, hopefully. And let's see, I'm looking at this on the monitor because honestly it gives me a better idea of how it really looks. I'm going to add a little bit more blue to this side because I feel like it's a little unbalanced. There we go. Deepen up the colors here and there and just kind of play with it a bit. If you need to watch it in two times speed because I'm just going too slow, you go right ahead. If you get too much dark, you can go ahead and blot it just like that. Oh, I like it. I'll blot that a little bit too, maybe. And there you have it. Don't forget to sign your name. You can find links to all the products that I used at Jerry's Artorama, and I thank them for sponsoring this video. If you like this video, please share it with your friends, hit that like button, and if you're not already, hit the subscribe button, and I'll have a new tutorial for you every day. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.